Now, today I got somebody really, really special for you. I'm, I'm talking about bombs, like bombs and bad guys, all the way to chief security officer of a really, really cool male security company, Ray Secure. And we're talking about the not only the one and only, the one and only. Super, I can't even, I'm super excited about this. I'm telling you guys, take, take your time. All right. Mr. Will Plummer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, it is yours truly once again, the corporate security translator and the author of this little book right here, So You Want to Get Into Corporate Security. Now today I got somebody really, really special for you. I'm, I'm talking about bombs, like bombs and bad guys, all the way to chief security officer of a really, really cool male security company, Ray Secure. And we're talking about the not only the one and only, the one and only. Super, I can't even, I'm super excited about this. I'm telling you guys, take, take your time, all right? Mr. Will Plummer, you get, you get claps, Will, you get claps, buddy. Not everybody, not everybody gets clap. Well, not everybody <laughs> does, man. Sometimes people get this. They'll get that, they'll get that. But you, you, my friend, you get, you get clap man. How are you, sir? Fantastic, man. Thank you for having me. Listen, I'm excited to have you, man, because, you know, you're like this awesome story that I think every single transitioning, you know, military folk can can kind of relate to. I mean, you go from bombs and bad guys, some very specific, and then you're kind of within that niche in a way. You find this position, man, where now you're a chief security officer. Now, I, I'm not going to say much about this, man. I'm going to let you kind of do your thing. But um, tell, tell people to transition. How the hell did you do it? How do you go from bombs and bad guys to still, in a way, kind of bombs and bad guys? and much much more man tell us it's a, it was actually an interesting experience so um i retired kind of quickly i didn't plan to i did 25 years and uh my transition everybody talks about take the last year you know you're going to do yeah. all this great stuff and then when you stand up and you tell them nope you're not cutting on my back you're not doing this you're not doing that you get about 58 days and in that time you gotta you know figure out the resume figure out kind of where you want to go what you want to do um but the most important thing that i found is honestly was kind of reflecting Looking right. back and realizing all the stuff you did over those years, hey, it's actually worth something. You just got to catalog it. You got to get it inside of, of you know, every good stuff there, a little I love me book. But you've got to get something that you can you can pull everything together and put enough ammunition in your in your belt and, and be able to go forward with it, man. That's it. it. And that's exciting. You know, that's it's funny. So I'm going to just start jumping in right here. One of the biggest things that I tell, uh, Will, the folks that are transitioning, it's like you have a bag of goodies. You spent 20, 25 years, 30 years in military, law enforcement, federal careers and all these things. So you have this bag of goodies. I think the biggest thing is being able to translate, translate from what you had in all those years in the military and kind of translate it into the corporate world. And it seems that that's that's what you did. Yeah, well, a little bit of trial and error, yeah, but the reality is the, the vernacular is different, right? So we all know words in certain manners that mean certain things and everything has nomenclature. Uh, this, this side of the world does too. The corporate America has the same words. You just need to know how to translate them properly. And there's yeah. a lot of stuff like your book, Carlos. There's other books out there that will help you go from point A to point B, and it's just a guide. And everybody yeah. has their own experience as well. Yeah, I was just uh, a couple of a couple of folks that I, I talked to often. Ernie was one of them that talked about, you know, not every boat is your boat. Uh, you right. just got to find kind of find the right ride for you, man. And because uh, we always talk about different boats, I I just sold mine, uh, you know, which is sad, sad. I'm going to say, Will, uh, but uh, just, but that's I just bought mine. So we're OK. Hey, two happiest times, you know, they went where they are. Right. When you buy them, when you sell them. So, right. you know, that's the way to be. But I'm, I'm going to need a ride on that, by the way, Will, just so you know. Yeah. Hey, awesome. but real good stuff. So, you know, as you're transitioning out of the military, were there times that you're like, oh, crap, um, am oh, I going to make it? Uh, right. and, and then let's say when you made it, when you made it, you're like, you know, I should have thought about that or, man, I didn't know about this. So the biggest thing for me, honestly, was like, okay, what do you want to do next? And here's the crazy thing. It's, yeah. it's the freedom to choose, right? So the military, so much of what you do is dictated to you. It was scary for me to get to the end of it and go, all right, now what do I want to do? What do I want to do the next four, five, eight years to fulfill my desires and not right. my bosses. Because a lot of my stuff that I was working for was always for my boss. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You get those happy little commander times where you get to be in charge of everything. And then the rest of it is somebody else's intent. Yeah. So it's a chance, uh, it, it's some reflection and really think about where you want to go and what you want to do. And it will absolutely help you 
find your way. Absolutely, man. This, uh, you know, uh, if I could write the book again and go back to 10 years, 10 years before you retire, I think one of the biggest things I would say is that how about you prepare yourself so you don't have to transition to corporate security. You just enjoy your boat with your family. And, <laughs> and then you could do like a lot of folks when I was at the Walt Disney Company. I had a, I had a one-star general and everything that he worked for us for two days a week. And he's like, hey, man, I just, I just need to get the hell away from my wife every once in a while. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. But, I mean, then you work on your own, right? Do whatever the hell you want to do when you want to do it. But it is, it is a scary thought. And I've gotten from people that, especially that has families, you know, they have family, kids, wives. And, you know, yeah. a, a lot of us do. It's like, man, how do I, what am I going to do? And how do I prepare? But I really think that it needs to be on you, though. You got to take ownership yeah. of it. You got to bust your butt. It's not like it's not going to come to you. Was that some of the stuff that you said you set in your mind and go, look, okay, this is happening. I have no choice. Where do yeah, you I, go? I had two. I, I, I'm a planner, right? So I had my primary and my secondary courses of action. Yeah. My primary courses of action is what I ended up doing. I, 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 I jumped into a startup that, that was extremely effective and we've been growing exponentially and is going great. My backup, I had some management stuff that I was going to pull from, you know, I had several companies that I really didn't necessarily want to go do that job, but yeah. it was, it was. It was in the wings if I needed it. And what that allowed me to do was was really jump off the springboard into what I wanted to do. Right. So don't just bet everything. I mean, we've all had, if you've got kids, you've seen kids put their college applications in and yeah. they've got their dream school and they've got their backups. It's, it's a smart move. It's a good thing to do with your career too. Put some backups in there and just kind of have them. And it makes you step forward a little farther than you'd normally expect to. Oh man, that's, yeah, that's awesome. So, so startup. Startup. Right. Now, that's probably not something that everybody that's uh, retiring uh, or, yeah. or, you know, transitioning from the military are like, you know, I am going to look for a startup. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I rarely ever see that, but but you did it and you're doing it. W was there some dangers with that? Do you still every once yeah. in a while like, OK, I, th I think we're doing it right. Or now it, it, it just feel, feels normal. Now it feels normal, but I'll tell you. So I took that test when you get ready. Anytime you transition out of the government, whether it's federal, whatever, they're going to take these tests. And I took it and they said, you should be in a company with more than 50,000 people in it. You like organization. You like standards. I joined a company and I was number four. And, you know, everybody says the hat game. Really, it was the personality that you you bring. And it's it's really, it's a it's an, an interpersonal thing. It really becomes a, a little tiny group, a core of family. And uh, for the first year and a half, it was scary. Yeah, We all looked around and like, okay, if this doesn't fly, what are we going to do next? And I did have kids and I, I got college. I got to pay for them. And, you know, I, I'm lucky. My wife's a college professor, but there's a lot of stuff out there that I, I, I was a little bit nervous and uh, it's, it's worked. It's working really well over here. Yeah, and that's uh, that's really exciting for you because that's a big leap. It's a big leap on things that, especially people that come from the military and law enforcement, they, they, they know exactly what their day to day kind of, kind of is going to be. They know that the paycheck is going to be there on the fifteenth yeah. and at, at the end of the month. You know, every couple of weeks, and um, so they're quite aware. So taking this kind of leap where you start in a, in a startup company, and this is for all the listeners that are out there, there's definitely some amazing startup companies. But I would oh, yeah. do your due diligence. I would really look at it. And I'm thinking, Will, that you probably did your due diligence. You're like, okay, this is probably needed in the market. This is probably something that's going to grow and be big because of the future of bombs and bad guys kind of thing. I mean, you did put some time into it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I went back and, and talked to my wife and, and really did some research and, and said, okay, this mail security thing, how, much, how many threats are actually out there? And there's a lot. There really is a lot. I mean, I kind of had the background. I've been an EOD guy for 25 years. You responded to a bunch of mail rooms over, you know, over that period of time. It's a consistent thing. And then, you know, we look in trying to service corporate America. Is it a legitimate problem in corporate America? Yeah, according to USPS and everybody else, it actually is. And then before I joined, you take a look at who our clients were and you go, yeah, okay. Fortune 50s have already taken this, uh, already taken this technology on. This is, this is going to be a good bet. And then jumped in with both feet. And Man. I'll say to the listeners, there's a lot of really interesting startups out there. Technology is kicking in and people are harnessing it. And if you, if you've got the, the intestinal fortitude to kind of lean into it and uh, become one of the workhorses in one of these small startups, they need you military folks. I mean, we, you can wear 10 hats that some other people just have never seen get put on before. It's a, uh, it's a really interesting way to go. 
Man, I agree. It's like a you got to have this entrepreneurial kind of spirit too, yeah. man. I think you got to go out there and and, and make it happen. But uh, you did say something interesting. I think technology is it. I, I, I was just having another conversation with some of the security folks, uh, some astute security folks, way more intelligent than I'll ever be, but about the industry itself, you know, where the, the, the manpower, the operational hours, the people that are out there in the field, they're becoming less and less and less, and the demand is becoming more and more and more. So technologies are going to have to do it. They're going to have to be it. And I really am excited for like military folks that are like in, in the radar industry or military folks that are in the kind of the technology fields of the that military. Likes. Yeah, ex exactly. All of that stuff. What a great opportunity you're going to be coming into as as we go into into this future, man. And and it's so great. So Ray Secure. You guys are busy with mails and uh, dealing with the mail stuff. T tell me a little bit about that. What is, what is it that, what mail stuff? So uh, just some random numbers. Like it, it, it happens seven times a, a day. Corporate America gets hit. It happens all the time. White powder threats, people mailing in hoaxes, mailing in threats against CEOs. Uh, corporations now have personalities. I mean, they're now living, <laughs> breathing entities and they now can effectively vote. So with that, uh, people react to them. Um, we have the politicians are, are louder than as, you know, as loud as they've ever been and all the things that are going on. Mail is honestly the weakest security point for a lot of our, a lot of our clients. And they're trying to shore up that security because it's a logistic effort. If right. you talk to a lot of, a lot of SOs or a lot of security leaders, they'll say, look, I don't have a mail problem. And then if you, I'm, you know, get a beer in them and you sit and talk to them for a minute and you go, all right, what happened last year? Well, we had that gun that we mailed. Remember that? We found that one. And yeah. I had that hazmat team by my desk about nine months ago. And I did have that. Well, yeah, but all those, it's only four events. But that's it. Gotta, that's only, yeah, it's only four. <laughs> People just don't look at it like it. So what Race Secure does is we have, a, we have a millimeter wage scanning system that allows you to see inside of packages, see things that move. So before white powder ends up on your CEO's lap, the screener gets it down in the, the mail room. Um, it's mobile, it's safe. It doesn't have any security, any training requirements. You can just put it anywhere like a desktop printer. And then we couple that with a service, which is why we need an EOD guy up here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, MIT is right next to us. Harvard's on the other side. And we look at pictures of threats every day right. and help our clients who don't necessarily have that expertise down in their mailroom or in their logistics functions. So they can just pick up the phone, call, we take a look and you get an EOD person who's got the background to say, no, it's not a threat. You're okay. And yep. all those false positives, they get pushed to the side. Wow. So you guys, so you're not only, let's say, the hardware with the software, yep. but you're also the human side of things, which is, I think, almost even more important at times, um, especially, you know, big companies. They're like, all right, look, I, I, I see what you're saying. Just just breathe. There's, there's nothing wrong here. Um, man, I didn't know. I didn't know that you guys did that, man. So that's really exciting. And so for the, pillow, for the folks, again, that are, that are listening to this and later on going to watch on YouTube, hey, good to see you out there. Um, I, I think it's key to know that there are amazing opportunities as you transition and new companies with new attitudes and and new styles i mean you're you're needed as much as anybody else so if you're a bomb and bad guy either you know in the military or dealing with bombs and bad guys either in the military or or even law enforcement um there's a bunch of great opportunities for right. was there some landmines was there some some stuff that you that you literally would caution people as they're transitioning like you really have oh, to yeah. focus on a couple of things or or you're gonna fail or you're just gonna have a hard time it, so uh, some of my own mistakes you know one thing about the military or working with the government or whatever you, you have a confidence you're ready to go walk in and solve whatever problems out there right and the reality is I, i've been at this for two and a half years and i'm still googling stuff at night right <laughs> You, that's that's it. You know, being honest about this, be a little bit humble. Uh, the people who you're working around, these new people that, that have softer personalities and you don't necessarily understand what's going on with them, they have a much better understanding of what's going on. Listen to them. Um, that's one. That was really big one. I, I've, I've been a long time of being in charge and I've got all this and yeah, probably, probably should have paid a bit more attention to those around me first. Um, and don't be afraid to take risks and volunteer uh -huh. for stuff. There's a couple things that the military will, depending upon where you come from, you don't raise your hand, you don't raise your head. My job, you do all the time. But a lot of people were trained, look, just do what you're told, keep your head down and go. Raise your hand, volunteer, get in the middle of it, uh, go learn some stuff. 
This, yeah. There's nothing out here that isn't, you know, nothing's impossible. You just got to put some work into it. Absolutely, man. I used to I used to have a saying. I said, you know, I want to be the most prepared in the room. And in order for you to be the most prepared corporate security professional in the room, you have to take like I'm going to call them measured risks. But you have to raise your hand and you have to take on things that people don't want to take on. Uh, I'm sure. And, I, you know, one of the ones things I learned was like budgets. I never sat there and actually figured out how much budget. I would have to fight for or how much budget I would need or a, a three, five, 10 year plan on return on investment on security uh, systems and all these other things. And it was something that I, man, I was, I was, I was like, no, nah, I can't do this, but I wanted to be the most prepared in the room. So I raised my hand. I said, I'll take on budgets. And, and it was that, were you doing like budgets? What are the business pieces? Like these little business pieces that you learn, were you doing that in the military or something that you learn on the go? Yeah, as a, as a commander, you do. I, I did 12 yeah. years enlisted and 12 years as an officer, so I, I kind of played both sides. But uh, you do. The, the difference is <laughs> there's no real bottom line in the government. <laughs> there's no, right? So it's, it's taxpayers' money, but the reality is come October or come, you know, one October, if you don't spend it, you lose it. So you just end up spending a lot of stuff anyway. On this side, yeah, it, it's it's really similar. If you ever run a budget, if you've ever done forecasting or looking at palm years or whatever vernacular you use, but there's a much different bottom line. Yeah, it's not just measured in success. Did we get all of our training done? It's also did I save some money this year? And can I do this effectively? My my words are always realistically relevant. Make sure it's repeatable and then reliable. Yeah. If you go through those and you can knock them all down, you're good. And then if you could make it where it doesn't cost a fortune, even better. Wills four R's. Yeah, that, I use them a little bit. I like that, man. I like that. No, that's uh, that's really good. That's really good because. There's some things that I always said that, you know, military may may miss when it comes to transition in the corporate world. There are definitely some things that folks need to think about because a lot of times you're not writing, you know, the standards, how things are going to be built or you're not writing policies. You know, they're usually uh, they're uh, posted onto you or, or given Correct. to you as oh, a yeah. way. Oh, so yeah. you have a lot of these things that you have to start thinking about. And then liability. You know, I, I tell folks all the time that the liability in the corporate world is definitely viewed through through the legal system or your, your legal folks and your HR folks, where in the military, it's kind of it's given to you and it's not based on some kind of international treaty or right. something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's always some of the things that, that I've seen in your company. And I, I'm guessing as the, the chief security uh, officer, you're involved with all of these things. now. So you're not right. only just a uh, kind of bombs and bad guys person anymore. Yeah, like you're like everything. I would try to. And the other thing that's been helping up, too, is like with our clients, yeah. a lot of them that we help out with SOPs and things like that as well. So they don't. It's, it's it's a weird little niche in corporate America. Everybody always says, for example, like I use the mail part of it. Um, set up a mail SOP. I've had a whole lot of clients say, yeah, I got told to do that last year. I just haven't got time to get around to it yet. So, right. okay, we help with that. Um, the other thing is a lot of people just don't know. I, what's the industry standard on how you handle problem A and versus problem B? Um, so we, we help out with a lot of that stuff. Um, and we do write a lot of it on this end. I, I'm helping to write the standards on a few things that hopefully the security world will see in the next four to six months yeah. Um, because there's no standards out there and we're trying to, to establish them for the community at large. Well, you just hit on a key point because the question always is, okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing in your mail is okay. They, 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 there's a package and it has something. And usually the corporate world or me now, uh, you know, as somebody that would use your, your system would say, well, it's great, but what do we do now? We found it. <laughs> well, so what it do we do? Part. Yeah. And uh, so you guys, you guys help with that too, writing, yeah. writing the, the policies that, that would assist us in, you know, I right. uh, think that with dogs, I used to have that with dogs all the time, you know, love, love a lot of canine companies and they come in and, and, and I use them a lot at the Walt Disney company, sports entertainment world uses a, a heck of a lot of them. And I used to say, Hey, it sounds good, man. So, but what do we do? Uh, if the dog does something, what, what do we do? You know? So awesome, you know, man. That's a, See, that's the fun part for me. I'm a problem solver. I yeah. love when people come up with a very gray problem and we want a, a not gray solution. We want black and white. How do we figure this out? Yeah. And it, one of the most interesting questions I'd like to ask anybody I talk to, what's your desired end state? So we've got clients, for example, and, and I first day they call me and I, I will answer the question because I, 
they you know they are high our clients and they know that they're going to get whatever answer at them. Right. And the reality is we've got some that are like extremely litigious. They're going to call 911 every single time. We're going to get a report generated. We're good. For them, it's an easy answer for me. All right. Step A through step Z. When you talk to the other ones on the other end of the spectrum, hey, I'm not calling anybody. We're not letting the news, press, anybody see we have a problem here on this campus or on this facility. How do we get that very gray problem off our primaries residence and get it into the world where we can handle it? You know, transfer points. There's 50 ways of doing it. But when you ask them, what are you? A lot of them haven't really thought that out yet. They right. don't really know what what type of problem they are. Are you a gray problem or are you a black and white one? So that's awesome. So problem solving, which, as you said, it's all over the military, law enforcement. I mean, we do that all the time. Law enforcement, you really got to make a decision right there and then that lawyers will take three years to deliberate right. over and, and, and try to get you on a decision you have to make it within a split second. And same thing, you know, probably back in your old military days, I got a, this pop in front of me, man. I got to make a decision here. But so I, I love that, man. And I, I wrote it down, problem solver. You got to be a problem solver if you're transitioning uh, from the military. And it seems like this is an opportunity. Now, you touched on something really interesting. We're going to get a little bit probably into the corporate security world. There is definitely some of those companies that said, yeah, 911. I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Not my thing. Call the people that deal with it. The problem is um, uh, companies like the Walt Disney Company, where you have 70,000 people every single day and it never closes, um, <laughs> you know, and you have to really find a way to measure these things yeah. before you're calling 911, because if they're going to block out a front entrance of, let's say, a park, uh, 30,000 people are not coming in. 30,000 people that are inside are going to have to be moved to somewhere else. All the rides, merchandise shops, and everything of that small city is going to have to close down. And mm -hmm. that's not an easy way to go. And, and that's awesome that Ray Secure says, okay, let's talk through this. Do you want to be that guy or this guy? And let's write some policies to, to really work for you, man. So I think what you guys are doing are, are, are just brilliant. Oh, brilliant, my friend. It's working. It's, it's fun. <laughs> It's, it's, it's working. working. No, this is really exciting. So we're, we're slowly coming in, man. I, I do these things in about 30 minute bursts, man, because look, I get bored after 10 minutes on everything. My wife <laughs> says I get bored after one minute. Uh, she really has to say, you know, put the phone down and, and, and now you got to listen to me kind of thing. And she's yeah. right. She's right. Because I'm thinking about 100 million other things other than w what I'm going to have for lunch. I kind of care less in that moment, except dinner with some beers. But anyways, um, so you got to you got to leave these folks then that are listening to this with a couple just a couple of things that they need to think about as they are transitioning and um, give them a hint or two, man, and just kind of maybe make make them feel a little bit more at ease, maybe. Yeah, so that OK. But good news stories. Um, th that problem solver comment. Yeah, that is, that's critical. That is so what you already know how to do is something that corporate America spends a lot of time and money trying to teach people. You already kind of jumped all those hurdles. You can think ahead, you can plan, you can run courses of action, all that stuff. You've already kind of got it ingrained in you. That's something that you you can take forward. Um, this is one of the best times to need a job. If you're looking at transition right now is the right time to be walking away from whatever service and whatever, wherever you work at, because the government is, is doing good, but the corporate world is, doing better and there's plenty of places to grow um, and with that there's a wide range of opportunities you don't have to say look I, I was a multifunctional logistician while I was in the military so therefore I must be a multifunctional logistician or look for something similar to that when I get out no take your talents and go see what works for you um, and the, the last thing and this is just another thing if you've ever taken a personality index or taken something like the MMPI or any of the things that'll look into you a little bit and give you some feedback do it. Go take one of those and answer those, those 80, 90, 100 questions honestly, and then have somebody read it, spend the 50 bucks if you need to or whatever, and get somebody to kind of help you understand yourself a bit better. It will it will absolutely help you with the process. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And then this uh, this little guy here, this little book right here, I think I break oh, down yeah, about six or six or 10 of those tests 
that I think are extremely important. A couple of them are even actually free, just yeah. for you to get just for you to get an idea of what's going on. So, well, I think I think those things are, are key, man. That you're just leaving the folks with. And um, I, I should, by the way, that was that was a shameless plug. I'm letting you know right now. That's very <laughs> shameless. Uh, but yeah, man, look. Um, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. you giving back to the community of, of great military law enforcement and federal career folks that are looking to transition, just trying to figure out what the hell do I do? Who do I listen to? Is there a, a hope out there? I'm really excited that you said there is no better time than today oh, yeah. to transition. I was literally just having a conversation with a lieutenant colonel, 82nd Airborne out there in North Carolina. And uh, I, I said, hey, so what's up, man? What do you got, a year and a half or four and a half years? And the reason for that is because he also did some reserve time. He goes, so, well, right. reserve time, year and a half. And But if now he's uh, active reserve, he's like, or I could wait four and a half years. And I said, have you done the math? So four and a half years, how much more money are you going to make if you join a corporation that you might, if money is your thing? make more money along with 401ks along with stocks along with bonuses that comes with a lot of these big companies and i i think i think you're right man i told him i said do the math man i'm not quite sure you know trying to figure out if you're gonna stay on your reserve years or your you know full-time years man if that's gonna make a difference you know 10 15 years down the road man it did. so i had the same boat i got yeah i, I was my back is what caused the thing, but I sat there and I looked at my wife and I said, like, all right, let's do the math here. I stick around and do blah, 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 blah. And you, and you lay it out and you go, all right, no, I've reached a point where I'm stagnating for at least the next three and a half years. I'm not moving forward. What's that worth? And it wasn't necessarily worth it. So yeah. it, 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 that math plays out. And if you, if you run it down and you think long-term, it will help you and inform you into decision-making process. I agree, Will. I agree, Will. Look it's at you, awesome. man. Hey, once again, thank you very much for coming out, giving back to the community. This is outstanding. Everybody, go check out uh, Ray Secure. If you're, if you're listening to this and you're going to go into some kind of a leadership position within a major company and you don't have uh, any kind of security, mail security stuff around, you got to reach out to, to Will and uh, Will's team. I think it's really cool. Um, if you're looking for a gig in five years down the road, reach out to Will, too. Be like, hey, man, you said that you know there's a lot of hiring out there maybe we're hiring right now we're hiring oh they're hiring right now so there you go see and um uh, but yeah man will i'm gonna leave you the last parting words do you have anything else to say and then thank i'll you, close carlos. this out buddy thank you carlos that's it man i had a great time this is fun i really hey. appreciate it. and the book is good the book thank it, you it, it did help me Hey, there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, man. That's how I like it. All right, everybody. So listen, we just hung out with Will and I, I got wrote some stuff down. You're talking about doing your due diligence. It is a scary out there, but you're going to have a lot of support, a lot of opportunities. Technology is the future. So if you're in a technology world and you're thinking about transitioning to the corporate world, you should really focus on that. If you're a problem solver, companies want problem solvers. That's what they want. And then uh, right now, right now, it's a great opportunity for you to think about if the extra three, four, five years is worth it or should you jump to something else that goes uh you know that gets that gets big so uh for myself uh, the corporate security translator and big time will over here we'll uh we'll catch everybody later on we'll see you buy this book will you you know i got i gotta feed kids <laughs> i got kids to feed all right now i'm kidding we'll see you guys out there take care and uh good night we'll see ya. bye bye <laughs>